So we already have a lot of experience graphing things, but let's review a little bit. So let's, let me draw some axes here. So that's my y-axis. And then this is my x-axis. That's my x-axis. And I'll just label it a little bit. So let's say that's x equals 1, 2, 3. And then on this axis, I'm going to go up to 9. And you'll see why in a second. So let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I just multiply. I just labeled all the multiples of 3. I could have labeled more than that. So that's a fa a fairly standard, at least the first quadrant of the coordinate plane. And now let's graph some functions. So I could graph a linear function. I could graph y is equal to x, what's that going to look like? Well, when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 2. When x is 3, y is 3. And it's going to look like this. We are going to get a line. That's why we call it a linear function. So we're going to get a line like this in any linear function. If I did y is equal to 2x, then I would just have a, a steeper slope. If I added some number here, say plus 2, then I would have the steeper slope, and I would shift it up by 2. So we've already seen that. Those are all linear functions. So let me just leave it as y equals x, per, I guess arguably the simplest linear function. I guess y equals a constant would be pretty simple as well. Now, let's also plot a quadratic. Or let's just plot y is equal to x squared. And that's actually why I went up to 9 here. Because when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 4. So y, y is 4. And when x is 3, y is 9. So it would be right, right over here. And so the graph of y equals x squared on this on these axes is going to look something like this. And we've seen this multiple times before. So it's going to look something like that. We're, we're used to recognizing this as a quadratic. And we're used to recognizing a line as a linear function. You can do that in that same green color. But now I want to do something interesting. I want to switch it up a little bit. I want to graph these same two functions. But instead of having a linear y-axis, I'm going to have a I'm going to have a, a y-axis that grows as a power of 2. I guess you could say I'm going to have a quadratic y-axis. So let me draw that. What am I talking about? So let's say, let's say that my best attempt to draw it. All right, I'm going to draw it roughly the same size. And on the x-axis, I'm still going to just go to 3. So on the x-axis, so that's 0, and then I have 1, and then I have 2. And then I have 3. But on the y-axis, I'm actually, let me actually do, label it like this. So label it like this. But instead of this just being 1, I'm going to say this is 1 squared, which is, of course, still 1. And instead of this being 2, I'm going to say this is 2 squared. So this is going to be 4. Instead of saying this is 3, I'm going to say this is 3 squared. This is 9. So notice, this isn't. This isn't, this isn't the y-axis. Uh, each, each, each of my tick marks aren't growing linearly. They're growing quadratically. And I could even do the tick marks in between. Instead of this being 0.5, I could say this is going to be 0.5 squared, which is 0 0.25. Instead of saying that this is 1.5, I could say that this is going to be 1.5 squared, or 2.25. Instead of saying that this is 2.5, I could say this is 2.5 squared, or 6.25. So once again, if I, go, if I go a certain distance, if I go a certain distance in this, I'm not increasing by the same amount. When I go from, when I go from, when I go from, from the bottom to here, I'm increasing by 1. When I go from here to here, I am increasing by 5. When I go from here to here, I am increasing by 3. I'm increasing by 1. I'm increasing by 3. I'm increasing by 5. So each, each incremental hash mark, I'm increasing by more and more and more. And so this right over here, this y-axis is no longer linear. This is now a, I guess you could say, this is a quadratic, or it's growing as a, as a power of 2. Uh, or uh, each hash mark, we're taking the square of which hash mark it is instead of just saying, or instead of just counting the hashes. 
Now what's interesting is what happens when we plot these functions on this new coordinate plane where in the x-axis I'm still linear, but in the y-axis I'm growing as a power of two. So let's try it out. And this is actually pretty interesting. I encourage you to pause the video and see if you could work through it on your own. All right, so let's plot, let's actually first plot y equals x squared, because this is actually going to be a little bit more straightforward. Well, when x is zero, zero squared is still zero. When x is 0.5, what's 0.5 squared? Well, it's 0.25, so it's going to be right there. When x is one, what's one squared? Well, it's one. When x is two, what's two squared? Well, two squared is four. When x is three, what's three squared? Well, three squared is nine. So it looks when I plot this quadratic and I had a quadratic scale for my y-axis, what just happened? Well, the graph of y equals x squared now looks like a line. y equals x squared. What, what kind of voodoo am I doing? Well, remember, this scale is no longer linear. That's why this now looks like a line. But what's interesting, or even more interesting, is what happens when I try to plot y equals x? Well, when x is zero, y is zero. When x is 0.25, y is going to be 0.25. And I'm just random, I'm just sampling some points that are going to be easy for me to pick out. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 2. So 2 is going to be someplace around here. When x is 3, y is 3. Actually, let me. So 2 might be around here. When x is 3, y is 3. So what is this graph looking like? It's going to look something like this. So the graph of the graph of y equals x on this axis or on this coordinate plane where I don't have where I no longer have a linear y axis, this is starting to look at least if I were thinking on linear in, on a linear scale, this looks like the graph of y equals square root of x. But it's not. This is the graph of y equals x. This is a linear function. It doesn't look like a line anymore because I no longer have a linear y scale. So hopefully this opens up your brain to thinking about, wow, there's all sorts of scales you can have. And it's not atypical, it's not unusual to have logarithmic scale, exponential scale. These things are actually done. And in general, if you change your scale, if say this x scale stays linear and on your y scale you're now growing quadratics, well then, or you're growing quadratically, then quadratics are going to look like lines on this on, on this coordinate. If you grew this, if you grew this logarithmically, then logarithmic functions are going to look like lines. So whatever whatever type of scale you do in the vertical axis, as long as you keep the x scale linear, then that type of function is going to look like a line on this kind of this wacky coordinate plane.